Hello, everyone. Good morning. Good afternoon. Um, so I'll be presenting our, our results from a pilot scale study uh, on a commercial dairy farm. Uh, this work was part of my PhD um, at Washington State University. I've long moved on to start a, a postdoc at University of Missouri. So I have dual allegiance to both institutions. So um, this was a dairy farm that we that 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 we started. They had a dry lot and a free stall system uh, where they were flushing manure. Uh, the manure was uh, collected here. There was a collection pit after which it was separated uh, using mechanical separators. Uh, the uh, the sl the slurry was sent to the anaerobic lagoon, while the solids were sent for windrow composting. Eventually, the water was picked from here and used on surface application. But we know the challenges that come with anaerobic lagoons. I'll not go deep into that. But uh, so that's how this technology came in on how, how can we treat the wastewater instead of just directly sending it to the anaerobic lagoon. So this was a layout of the vermifiltration system. We had the influent going through it some settling lines to uh, lower the solids content because we don't want to load our system with lots of solids. And we had a pump station that was pushing it to the holding tanks and another pumping station to the vermifiltration unit. So this was the vermifiltration unit and the bedding material was wood chips. So we're spraying the water onto the wood chips. And right here, you see a drainage tile. So the water was draining through the system and was being collected here. And uh, after which we had, there was also a recycling line uh, just to, to, to make sure that the system does not dry out, after which the water was then sent to the lagoon. So we picked samples from here at the effluent tank and samples from the holding tank for analysis. So these are just some pictures of the units being uh, constructed. Uh, we were working with this company called Biofiltro and you'll hear from them after me. But yeah, this was a layout of uh, the, the small pilot scale system that we studied. So um, there's a lot of details here, but uh, I've just highlighted some for you. Uh, these are some, uh, these are the flow rates of what was going into the, the system. We had 1500 gallons per day and uh, earthworm stocking density of 12,000 worms per cubic meter of bedding. So this is this is like this is like a standard in uh, vermifiltration systems, which uh, can be adjusted up and down. But for this system, this is what we had. Then COD, which is the chemical oxygen demand, is more like uh, a measure of how dirty the water is. So we are looking at three grams per liter, and uh, the total solids that we're going in were around eight grams per liter. So uh, this is. These are typical characteristics of uh, uh, lagoon uh, lagoon wastewater, which is around three to five percent total solids. It's a little more; it's, it's stronger than this, but uh, uh, you get the idea. Because uh, lagoon wastewater is around eight eight grams per liter, so this was a little uh, not as strong, but uh, it was it was good to show us the performance of the system. So we collected samples and uh, this, is, this is just some pictures that we gathered and we did our analysis of the samples to see how much organics, nutrients and solids we have in the wastewater. So the, in the organics, I was looking at COD. COD, like I told you, is chemical oxygen demand, which is how dirty the water is. So we're looking at two to three grams per liter. And for six months, we're monitoring how this system, uh, how much of this COD, this system was getting out of the wastewater. And we saw that we achieved reductions of up to 51%. There's a bit of variability, and this is attributed to several factors, the inlet characteristics, the performance of the bed, uh, the, temp the ambient temperature. So there are other factors uh, that, that, that are affecting this variability. But generally, we see that we're getting up to 51% removal in the dirty stuff in the water. So this was good progress. Uh, then we also looked at the solids. Solids were interesting because uh, we're putting in 6 to 10 grams per liter. 
and we saw that we're getting that 32 percent removal which, which which seems a little low but when you look at the suspended solids and the volatile solids for suspended solids we're achieving up to 68 percent removal and for volatile solids we're getting 57 percent so suspended solids these are more like uh, the solids that would settle out out of the wastewater then volatile solids these are a good indicator of emissions so uh, emissions and order are highly correlated with the volatile solids. So if we re if we reduce the concentration by fifty seven percent, we are hypothetically reducing the the strength of the wastewater and generating emissions and order by fifty seven percent. Then the nitrogen; these are the nutrients in the wastewater. Uh, so you see the total nitrogen in this six months period. Uh, we were putting in up to 1.2 grams per liter, and for total nitrogen, we we're achieving removal rates of up to 91%. Nitrogen comes in different forms. There is ammonium nitrogen, there is nitrate nitrogen, but uh, we see that ammonium nitrogen was going up to 81%, and nitrate nitrogen was getting up to 74%. Phosphorus is also a big factor in wastewater. Uh, we put it in one gram per liter and we achieved a removal rate of up to 57%. Interesting though is orthophosphates. Orthophosphates are more like, they're, they're phosphates in an organic form. This is what uh, the plants use. We were seeing that this amount actually reduced, uh, that actually increased through the system. This implies that there was a form of mineralization. So we are having uh, an increase in the orthophosphates. Uh, this is just a summary of all the all of the performance under organics we have cod under the solids we had total solids and total suspended solids then under nitrogen we had the three forms of nitrogen and under phosphorus we had total phosphorus and orthophosphates so you see we are ha having reductions of you see the nitrogen is pretty high has a, a very high reduction the solids are as you can see, the total suspended solids were pretty high. Organics are fair. Phosphorus was fair, but orthophosphates, we see some cases where we, we are getting more orthophosphorus than we are putting in. So um, this is just a pictorial uh, visualization of uh, the, the inlet sample. This is what we're putting in, and this is what we're getting out on a filter paper. These darker shades, these are the, uh, this is the solids off of the inlet samples. Then these lighter ones are the solids off, off of the outlet samples. So we believe that this quality can be used uh, for recycling the flash bands and can also be applied uh, at fairly higher amounts and with a, with, with a, a larger land base. We went ahead and looked at the emissions coming off of the influent and the effluent uh, wastewater streams. So we set up our equipment for emission measurement and we were loading samples into this. We call it a chamber, closed chamber method. So we're loading the samples into this and reading how much emissions are coming off of it. Uh, and the focus was on ammonia and methane. We saw that we're getting 0 0.11 grams and uh, 1.9 grams of methane and uh, uh, ammonia. And uh, when we look at the streams, the streams coming out of the vermifilter, we're seeing reductions of the, these emissions of up to 100%. If I put this in comparison to a lagoon, with a lagoon, we'll be getting up to seven grams per square meter per day and 60 grams per square meter per day. What this means is uh, it does not mean that the vermifiltration is going to reduce your emissions by 100%, but it's showing that it's, it can reduce the potential emissions of uh, the, the emissions coming off of the wastewater by reducing the, the organics and the solids. We still have volatile solids in the, in, the, in, the, in the wastewater, so there's still potential to generate more emissions. Then uh, we decided to build our own lab scale systems because with this system, we're able to adjust the earthworm density, the loading rates, and the, uh, the organic loading rates and the hydraulic loading rates. Hydraulic loading rate is how much water we're putting in. Organic loading rates is how much dirty stuff are we putting in, how, much, how dirty is the water. So we're able to adjust this and see how the system performs. 
So what we observed, um, there's a lot of information here, but I can just give you a summary of what's happening here. When we look at the organics, the nutrients and the solids, we see that the more earthworms we put into this system, you see 0, 5,000, 10,000, 15,000, we are tending to get to, we are tending to get more reduction efficiency. So the reduction improves with increase of the, uh, the earthworm density. And it's, it's, it's the same for COD, which I told you is chemical oxygen demand, nitrogen and the total solids. So generally we are saying that the more earthworms you put in, uh, uh, the, the, the better the system is at reducing these uh, parameters. Uh, hydraulic rotting rate is also something we looked at. We saw that the more water you put into the system, system gets to a point and it's like, yeah, the system starts, uh, the reduction starts going down. You can see it first goes up, then starts going down. So anything past one cubic meter per square meter per day, we see that the system is starting to struggle. For, for 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 majority of these uh, these parameters, and lastly, we also looked at uh, uh, the organic loading rate. This one I told you is how dirty the water is. So we see for COD, total nitrogen, total solids, total phosphorus, that as we put in more organics, we see that re the reduction efficiencies are going down. What this implies is. And the system is starting to struggle. We're loading it with a lot of, uh, we're giving more food to the microorganisms. So there, there's a higher food to microorganism ratio, which means the system is not as performing as it should be. So we should be cautious about how much organics we put into the system. So in conclusion, uh, we've seen that this system is really a good a good system at reducing organics solids and nutrients because we've seen reductions of up to 90 percent and it also has potential to mitigate gaseous emissions coming off of uh, wastewater streams we've also looked at the hydraulics uh, the more hydraulics we put in and the more organics we put in we see that the system is starting to struggle a bit we see the reduction efficiencies going down uh, but generally the tech home is that this is a good technology and it's it's a new tool that we should adopt in uh, management of dairy, dairy wastewater, especially those systems that are having uh, uh, manure alleys and are flushing, flushing them. And for the next presentation, I'm going to hand over to Patrick from Biofiltro, who is going to give us uh, a more large scale system and uh, further details of, of the, the vermifiltration system. Thank you very much.